At GDC 2022, we announced our latest sample game, Gagaya. This upcoming puzzle platformer is still in active development, but today we're taking a sneak peek at the project and the tech behind it. In this video, we'll see our first glimpse of gameplay, highlight some of the tech used, and discuss the three pillars driving the production of Gagaya. Fun gameplay, immersive worlds, and successful release. By the end of the video, you should have an understanding of our hopes for the project and an idea of how you could use the project to suit your own needs. To get to that point, let's go back to when we first started creating Gagaya. The goal was to focus on building a game like most developers do, not by focusing on engine-specific features, but by caring about what makes our game fun and our studio successful. To explore this, let's look at our first pillar, fun gameplay. In a platforming game, fun gameplay starts with your main character. In Gagaya, our protagonist Wandu, alongside Minda, his trusty companion, find themselves in a deserted village known as the Oasis. Using his jetpack and power gauntlet, he sets off on a journey to uncover the ancient secrets from the gods of old known as the Gagaya. Wandu uses a custom physics-based character controller developed specifically for Gagaya. The team behind it spent a lot of time tuning the rig to make him feel immersive and alive within the world. To achieve this, the team started by creating a custom physics-based gym. This gym allows the dev team to interact with gameplay elements in a condensed setting, which results in quicker iteration. In the gym, developers are able to push the limits of what they expect to see in-game, enabling them to test edge cases and extreme scenarios. This method proved valuable in helping Wandu's developers find and solve bugs even as the main environment was still being built. There are other added benefits too, like promoting decoupled systems. By minimizing references between the scene and the character, we help reduce merge conflicts when multiple developers are working on the project at the same time. Some of Wandu's abilities include jetpack jumping, melee attacks, and using his gauntlet to defeat enemies and solve puzzles. This character controller also has a terrain detection system that uses the angle of the ground and Unity's animation system to create realistic leaning, stairs, and balance animations. But all of Wandu's abilities go to waste without a level to use them in, which brings us to our second pillar, Immersive Worlds. When we talk about immersive worlds, we're talking about making our worlds feel alive and lived in. It could be how the camera draws your attention to a certain area, or how grass reacts to a player running through it. It's the small details that make our players get lost in our games. We've been using those details to tell the story of the Oasis. The settlers that once inhabited this land left after depleting it of its resources, leaving the village abandoned and ready to be reclaimed by the wildlife. To convey this, we use many features of Unity's 2021 LTS release and the Universal Render Pipeline. Features like decals that enable artists to create interesting details, Shadograph allows for variation in modular buildings, and VFX Graph is used to create atmospheric effects such as sand particles blowing in the wind. These details help to create a stylized yet believable world. World building isn't just done through the environment though. It's also a story told by the creatures that call it home. The Oasis is full of inhabitants who pose a potential threat. These creatures help in creating fun gameplay and immersing the player. Each creature behaves in a way that makes them feel natural and reveals small details about them. For example, the hog-type enemies have a natural hard shell perfect for defending themselves. If Wandu gets too close, they're not afraid to use their size against him. On the other hand, the small rodents and shellfish of the Oasis know they don't have a chance against the larger opponent and prefer to scurry off instead if threatened. All of these creatures are brought to life using a combination of C-sharp code and visual scripting. We use this combo to create an easy-to-read state machine that controls the character's behaviors. Creatures also rely on nav meshes to find their way around the oasis. Even flying creatures that don't touch the ground use this system in conjunction with animation tricks to create a believable flying pattern. The project's features and resources will be available for users when Gagaya releases, which brings us to our third and final pillar, successful release. This is where understanding why we're creating Gagaya is important. Most people would think we're creating a sample game for creators to harness, but that's actually a byproduct of our efforts. The real effort is in gaining a deeper understanding of developers' needs. We want to go through the same victories and pain points as you do. While creating Gagaya, we aren't trying to promote a new feature or being forced to use any particular tool. Instead, we're trying to create the best game we can 
and learn how we can improve our tech in the process. This extends beyond just the Unity editor and the development tools. Gagaya will be releasing as a free sample game on Steam to enable us to learn about the challenges faced by developers all the way up until a public release. By facing these same challenges, we gain a greater understanding of the problems faced by our community and can work to make game development better for everyone. We hope you enjoyed this first look into Gagaya. Stay tuned for more information about the project coming soon. For more information, you can visit Unity's blog or Unity's YouTube page to view the reveal trailer, GDC presentations, and more. You can also sign up for Gagaya's mailing list to be amongst the first to get updates on the project. Links in the video description. Until next time, thank you for watching.